Well, hi everyone. Uh, sorry for the scratchy voice. I've got a cold as I make this recording. Short recording on an introduction to what is stoichiometry. Now what we're going to do today is go through what is stoichiometry and a sample type problem, but realize that this will be an overall picture and that we'll break down the process into three main types of problems to begin with. Mole mole, mole mass, and mass mass. And I will explain those to you personally the next time we meet. So first of all, if you have an equation, it's kind of like a recipe. It shows the proportional relationships between the product and the reactant. And it can tell me how much product I can make and then how much reactant will I need. So for example, if you were cooking chocolate chip cookies, <clears throat> you would need to know what are the ingredients that you'll need and if you wanted to double the recipe to make, for example, twice as many cookies. So stoichiometry is a funny sounding word, but it's simply the study of quantitative relationships between the amounts of reactants used and the amount of product that is produced by a chemical reaction. So it all starts with a very important balanced equation. So a very common example would be how much of one reactant would be needed to combine with a given amount of another reactant? Or how much product would be produced from a specific amount of reactant? Now the problems can be, here are some moles, solve for moles, and that's what we call a mole-mole problem. They could also be mole mass or mass mole, Someone gives you grams and you have to solve for moles, or someone gives you moles and you have to convert to grams. But this particular problem, how much silver can be produced from 17 grams of silver nitrate? They weren't very specific. They should have said how many moles or how many grams. But the first thing you always start with is you have to start with a balanced equation. So the coefficients of a balanced equation will give you the relative amounts, but they only work for moles. So you will be using the molar ratios that you'll find in the balance equations, plus going back to the periodic table to get molar masses so that you can convert grams into moles or moles into grams as needed. So <clears throat> write the balanced equation is always your first step. If it's given to you, great, silver nitrate plus sodium chloride, switch them, would make silver chloride precipitate and sodium nitrate. This one was easy because I've given you the equations, but sometimes I might give it to you in words, which means you would have to know your ions to know that every ion represented in this equation <clears throat> is a plus or a minus one. So it came out a lovely one to one to one to one ratio in moles. Now we don't write ones in chemistry, but remember those numbers in pink are only for moles. You cannot substitute in the word gram. So what it means is one mole of silver nitrate reacts with one mole of sodium chloride to produce one mole of silver chloride and one mole of sodium nitrate. So continuing on, with this molar ratio that we produced, we're going to be able to take the 17 grams that were given. This is called the entry number. And either I give you moles, which makes your work easier, or I give you grams of something and you have to convert it to moles. So here is the process of converting 17 grams of silver nitrate into moles. And that number, 170, came from the molar mass off the periodic table of one solar, one nitrogen, and three oxygen. People who are good at math can probably see right now 17 divided by 170 is a tenth, but let's not take any shortcuts just yet. Now what's going to happen is that you will find out from the periodic table that you'll have a tenth of a mole. But what you can really do with this problem is string it out in a long string of conversion factors and now we have to go to, given one-tenth of a mole of silver nitrate, how many moles of silver chloride would we make? And that requires finding the relationship between silver nitrate and silver chloride. Now, if you look carefully at the balance equation, one mole of silver nitrate makes one mole of silver chloride. 
so far we've determined in our head that we have one tenth of a mole of silver nitrate, so we should be able to make one tenth of a mole of silver chloride. However, the problems aren't this easy, and I would like to break it, as I said before, into parts to show you how to take it in one long, beautiful, elegant equation to get you from what you were given and where you need to go in any type of stoichiometry problem. So the next thing that you will see in stoichiometry problems is a mole-to-mole -mole ratio, and that's signified right here. <clears throat> now, if this problem had simply asked for moles of silver chloride, you'd be done, because I would simply take one-tenth, and then I would have one-tenth of a mole of silver chloride being produced. Notice that when you start a problem with, say, grams, grams must go on the following conversion factor. Moles are always at the heart in the middle of these problems, so I have moles of silver nitrate down here, and everything canceled except for the moles of silver chloride. <clears throat> and again, the 170 came from the periodic table molar mass. But the ratio that you see on the far right came from the balanced equation. So I hope you can see how critical it is now that you must write formulas correctly first. Then you balance. Then you can use the ratio correctly. If you've written a formula incorrectly, all of your math is going to be wrong and it makes you very sad. Okay, so now we have the silver chloride that we were asked to find, but what if the problem wanted us to convert it into grams? You still have exactly the same kind of problem. Change grams of silver nitrate into moles using this part of the equation change moles of silver nitrate into moles of silver chloride using a one-to-one -one ratio. But finally, if you need to change moles of silver chloride to grams, you must multiply by its molar mass, 144 grams per mole, gotten from the periodic table. Again, everything will cancel. Grams silver nitrate cancels grams of silver nitrate. Moles of silver nitrate cancels moles of silver nitrate. And finally, moles of silver chloride cancels moles of silver chloride. And the answer that you would get will be 17 divided by 170 times 144 grams per mole of silver chloride. We went to, sorry, 114.4. So is your final answer because we had a tenth of a mole. Notice that we have three sig figs. Uh, technically, it should have been 17.0 grams of silver nitrate, so that's why three sig figs are being shown. So if you are going to do a problem like this guy, how many grams of copper sulfide could be produced from 9.9 .9 grams of copper chloride, you're going to have to start with a balanced equation. So here is our balanced equation, copper chloride, reacts with hydrogen sulfide gas. Don't worry about that word excess. And it will make a single double replacement reaction. And so we're probably going to make copper sulfide, which they asked me about in the problem. And I bet it's hydrogen chloride. Now this guy needs some balancing. So I'm going to need to put a two here to balance the two coppers over on the right hand side. And I'm probably going to need another two to fix those hydrogens. And then that fixes the two chlorides on the far left. Pretty sure that's done in balance. Then you go back and you look at the problem. What did they give you? What did they ask for? The 9.9 .9 grams of copper chloride is your entry moles. So you write what you know. 9.90 grams of copper chloride. And then you can never use grams from a molar ratio from the problem. So the next conversion factor shows me converting from grams into moles. And the 99 grams of copper chloride came from the periodic table. It's the mass of one mole of Cu and Cl. Now, the next thing I have to change into is moles of copper sulfide. Moles will always be the heart of these kind of problems. So I'm going to write moles of copper sulfide on top, but I go get from the balanced equation the number of moles of copper sulfide there are per mole of copper chloride. And it's actually a 1 to 2 ratio. 
So whatever amount of copper chloride you begin with, you'll get half as much copper sulfide. That's one way to think of it. But we still have one more place to go because if you did all the canceling right now, you'd end up with moles of copper sulfide and they didn't want that. They wanted grams. So I'm going to put the molar mass of copper sulfide on top. I put the one mole of copper sulfide on the bottom. And if you set it up correctly, everything will cancel out so that you get the right unit and the right stuff. So please notice before we solve, we start with grams of a substance and convert it to moles. We look at the balanced equation and use the molar ratio to predict how many moles of other stuff would we produce or consume. If I was stopping at moles, I'd be done, but this problem wanted grams, so the last factor was a molar mass for copper sulfide. <coughs> and you should end up with 7.95 grams of copper sulfide. It doesn't really show here yet. There's my uh, where the things come from. The molar mass of the first substance from the periodic table, the molar ratio from the equation, and the last molar mass again from the periodic table. But all of the units on that should have canceled out to leave you with the grams of substance that you were solving for. Take a moment then and set up this problem that you could see on your own. It says we will have calcium hydroxide reacting with phosphoric acid. And I will stop there until I see you the next time.